friends, I'm ecstatic you've joined me here at Fizzlebop Labs, where faith meets science. We have a marvelous, yet super simple experiment today we call chicken sounds from a cup. Have you ever heard a rooster crow or a chicken quack? In today's experiment, we are going to replicate, which means copy, the sound of a chicken. Sound is a wondrous thing. It is invisible, yet impactful. You can't actually see sound, though you can see its effects on things or even feel it yourself. Some sounds are quiet and some are very loud. And today, we're going to create an amplifier that will make the sound we produce louder and easier to hear. Are you ready? All right, let's make haste and begin. Gather your fellow scientists, friends, and family. My assistant today is Waverly. Hi. First, I want to give you a safety warning. This experiment requires a nail, so have an adult assist you or supervise this experiment. Next, you'll need to gather a few supplies for our project. We'll read the Fizzlebop supply list and show you the items. And then if you want, pause the video to go gather your supplies. I promise we'll wait right here until you come back and push play. The items in the Fizzlebop supply list will create one amplifier. So if you have several scientists, we have two, gathered together, be sure to get supplies for each person. All right, Waverly, our first item is a plastic drinking cup. Excellent. Then we need a nail. Next, we need 24 inches or a metric 60 centimeters of yarn or cotton string. Awesome. Fizz tip, nylon string does not work well for this experiment. You'll also need a paper clip, a roll of paper towels, and some water in a bowl. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to go gather your supplies. Now it's time for some fantastic fun. Are you ready for the experiment? Waverly, are you ready? Yeah. Wonderful. First, we're going to use a nail to delicately punch a hole in the center of the bottom of the cup. Center, bottom. Take your nail, punch a hole right in the center. Good job. Looks like a great hole. Okay, got our nails. We can put these to the side now. Next, we're going to tie one end of the yarn or string to the center of the paper clip. All right, so now you have a string and I have a string. Now push the free end of the yarn right here through the hole in the top of the cup and pull it through, leaving the paper clip on the outside of the bottom of the cup like an anchor. That should hang like an anchor. See how the uh, paper clip is an anchor on the bottom of the cup. No problem. Awesome. Next, we're going to rip off a piece of paper towel about the size of a dollar bill, then fold it one time and get it damp in the water. Can you give me a piece of paper towel? Can you get one for you? Excellent. And again, so you can fold this down so it's about the size of a paper towel. It should be, a, oh, that's good. You can do that too. Fold it in half once. You can see we've got it folded, it's about the size of a paper towel. And then you're gonna fold it over one more time like this. And fold it square like that. Excellent. Now, this is very important. Another fizz tip for you. Do not soak the paper towel. Just get it damp. Put it in there a little bit. Don't touch it. Nice and damp, and see how I got one side damp? And then you can pull like this, and there's some nice and damp. Now, hold the cup upside down, grip it tightly in one hand, then wrap the damp paper towel around the string near the rim of the cup. Ready? Finally, squeeze the string and pull down in short jerks so the paper towel tightly slides along the string. <coughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Funny. What does it sound like to you? It sounds like a like a like a chicken or a crow. That's what I heard. I heard a chicken clucking. Let's like so see if we can do a rooster crow. Ready? Let's see if we can make a crow sound. Yeah, I didn't really do it, huh? But you definitely hear the chicken clucking. All right. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this experiment. Dr. Fizzball, what's happening? 
Well, the vibrations from the string are nearly silent. However, when you add the cup, it amplifies its vibrations. Have you ever noticed the hole in a guitar? It's directly under the strings. This feature is called a sound hole, and it's used in acoustic guitars, mandolins, violins, lutes, and other instruments. Each of these instruments uses a feature like our amplifier to increase the volume of sound vibrations. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Has anyone ever called you chicken because you didn't want to do something? What would you do if soldiers showed up to kidnap your best friend? Would you stay or would you run and hide so the soldiers wouldn't take you too? After Jesus was arrested, Peter faced this very dilemma. Open your Bible and read Luke 22, 54 through 62. You can pause the video until you're done reading. Peter was the only one of Jesus' disciples who dared to get out of the boat and walk on water. Now, that certainly takes courage. Peter had a big heart and a big mouth, which often got him in trouble. And I'm a lot like Peter. I, too, am one to jump before I think. You see, more than one experiment has gone awry, which means wrong, because I didn't take the time to ponder, which means think. Mostly, though, Peter's leaping to action because he trusted Jesus was a good thing. And yet Peter and I have something else in common, too. Something not so fantastic. You see, this one kid in my class, Max, was really good at art. He could sculpt anything out of clay. And he made the best, funniest comic strips. I mean, they were so funny. But one time, my friends were making fun of one of Max's projects. I heard a voice in my head telling me this wasn't right, but I did nothing. Then, one of my friends tripped Max as he walked by. His clay sculpture fell and shattered into a gazillion pieces. A screw twisted in my stomach and the voice inside me said this wasn't right. Yet again, I didn't listen and I said nothing. Finally, as Max began to cry over the destruction of this masterpiece, my friends started to laugh and point. And though my stomach churned and the voice sounded louder and louder and louder, I still did nothing. I just followed my friends as they walked down the hall and gave each other high fives while I heard Max's whimpers behind me. That night in my room as I tried to pray, I began to cry. I realized how wrong I'd been. I hadn't acted as God had created me to act. In fact, like Peter, I denied Jesus three times. I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. Matthew 26, 34. Three times the Spirit of God had prompted me to act and three times I'd ignored him. I knew what I had to do. So the next day I sought out, which means look for, Max. He turned away as I approached embarrassed. But I tapped him on the shoulder and said, Max, I'm very sorry. I told him that I was a Christian, but I hadn't acted like one and that I was sorry for not standing up for him. You know what? Instead of being angry or blowing me off, Max surprised me. He quoted my favorite Bible verse, Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Max smiled. He said, Phineas, I forgive you. Relief washed over me, and that was a turning point in my life. It wasn't as though I never sinned again, but I knew that if I did, the best thing I could do was face the one I'd wronged and apologize. And you know, Peter changed too after that. Jesus forgave him. Peter became a man of action once again. This time, he would be sure his actions weren't based on his own ideas, but God's. In Luke 22, 32, Jesus told him, strengthen your brother. So that's what Peter did. He went on to become one of the greatest, most fantastic leaders of Christ's followers with his weakness turned to marvelous strength. His story gave me hope then, and it gives me hope today. Is there someone in your life you've been unkind to? Or have you stood by while others were unkind to that person? Pray for God to give you the opportunity to not only seek forgiveness from them, but perhaps to even become friends. As you ponder, which means to think, about the experiment and devotional, take a moment to answer these questions or discuss with your fellow scientists. Do you think 
the chicken sound would be louder if you used a larger cup. Why or why not? What other materials might you try rubbing on the string instead of a paper towel? Test them out to see if they create different sounds or no sound at all. And last, think of a time you disobeyed Jesus and later asked for his forgiveness. How did you feel to be forgiven by him? Is there anything you need to ask for forgiveness right now? Take a moment to pray for your family and friends by name, that each of you would have the strength and courage to stand strong in your faith, even in the face of adversity, which means a challenge. I hope you've had as fantastic of a time as I have here at Visibop Labs. Until our next experiment, remember, our amazing creator is ecstatic about you, and he will always be here for you. Chickens. It's just like chickens. Papa. You ever have a pet chicken? No. You ever want a pet chicken? Yeah.